Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to a brand new video here today and some more my team content. Today we are here for the Canadian Grand Prix round 9 of the season I believe and if you guys missed round 8 at Baku I do recommend you checking out if you haven't seen it guys. I'll leave it linked up in the top right hand corner of the screen but Baku was a very very historic race and something that's never happened before. The pace in the car on Sunday was just unreal and I do recommend you check it out because the outcome was pretty insane. Anyway, with that aside, we are here at Canada and this race is also very exciting because last weekend, or last season shall I say, sorry, we realised very quickly that we had good pace around Canada, the car was really quick. So I'm expecting even better things this year of course with the new upgrade, so I'm expecting to be really competitive. But guys, if you're going to enjoy the episode, drop me a like, subscribe if you're new as we're trying to chase 50,000 subs by the end of the year and let's get the episode underway. So there's a lot to get through here today. First and foremost, the weather forecast, and there is a chance of rain in the race on Sunday. In terms of R&D upgrades, it's very, very close between ourselves, Alpha Tauri, McLaren, Alpha Romeo. So there's a big battle going on there in the lower end of the midfield, and it's really, really competitive. Uh, this weekend, though, we don't have any upgrades on the car, but we do have two major chassis ones on the way, and both of those upgrades should actually get us pretty close to Renault. So that's going to be really, really interesting. Also, I've seen a lot of comments, guys, saying I should drop Mick Schumacher. So I had a bit of a look in the driver market to get an idea as to what kind of figures we're looking at, you know, in terms of buying a driver. And uh, we're looking at at least 11 to 12 million for, a, you know, a decent caliber driver, uh, which is quite a lot to be fair. So we're going to keep an eye on it. You know, we'll see how things progress. I'm... Um, I'm going to give Mick a few more races. You know, he's on he's on the tightrope, so he needs a good performance this weekend. You know, let's say that, you know, he should have scored points in the last race in Baku, so I'm expecting big things from him this weekend. Worth noting as well, we are going to be using Power Unit 1 for practice from now on, so um, that's going to be our practice engine in a way. We debuted practice unit, uh, sorry, engine, Power Unit number 2 um, in the last weekend, and um, we're going to be using those in the races, but for practice now, for hopefully for the rest of the season, we'll try and stick with Power Unit number 1. And after practice, we finish top of the table on the soft tires therefore hitting our goal bonus for our sponsors so we're going to get a nice healthy cash injection at the end of the episode thanks to that we then move on to qualifying and again we reverted back to the second power unit for the session so we've done our practice we then put on the normal engine and after practice you can see on screen in terms of the R&D points we bring in a pretty decent amount to be fair uh, we got to 759 so I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to afford upgrades at the end of the episode we'll have to wait and see it depends uh, what we earn in the race in terms of R&D points but that Outside, we now move into qualifying here at Canada. Now, um, this is going to be interesting because we've got really good pace. We finished top in practice, the race pace looks good, and I think we're going to be able to get through Q1 quite comfortably actually. So, let's see how it goes, and hopefully, it's enough. What we are going to do though is go on board for a full lap of the Canadian Grand Prix circuit, the Secret of Villeneuve, because this lap you're going to see right here was actually my best lap in Q1. So let's see if the lap was good enough to get us out of the drop zone, the bottom six, and uh, progress into Q2 or get knocked out in Q1. Let's find out. Let's get the lap on the way. And here we go, running up to the line. We cross the start finish and we go P9. Only one tenth behind Verstappen's pace and ahead of our teammate. The good news is we didn't have to go out for a second run. You know, we, we looked pretty good. Um, the tyres are working well. And you can see Mick Schumacher went through as well. So both cars into Q2, which is quite rare, which is really, really awesome to see. The pace seems decent. Mick is only a tenth, less than a tenth behind us, to be fair. It's really, really competitive in the midfield this weekend. And also worth noting, Perez in seventh place has a five-place grid penalty for the race tomorrow so we'll keep that in mind but we then move into Q2 and uh, this was my first lap in the session and it was going well we 
pretty much nailed the first two sectors, in fairness. It was going really, really good. We were currently stuck behind, I believe, Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes here, and he's on medium tires. And he was currently on that outlap. You can see his red light flashing. He was getting things ready for the lap. And I thought to myself, okay, perfect. The blue flag, he'll pull over to the side of the road, which he does. But then suddenly his light goes off, and that's when the AI changed their chip and they go into qualifying mode. So unfortunately, I got held up quite a lot through that final chicane. I wasn't able to carry the kind of speed I like to carry through there. And that's where I make up most of my lap time. So unfortunately, it's only a 1 minute 7.6 when we did, I believe, a 0.4 in Q1. So we're two tenths off the pace. Um, so we had to go again, currently P12 in Q2. But this was my best lap. It's a fresh set of tyres. Will it be enough to get us out of the drop zone? Let's find out. And there we go through the final chicane. Admittedly, a bit of a cut, I can't lie, but we are going to improve by pretty much half a second, and that's how much time we lost. We got up to third place. What a lap. Only a tenth off for Snappen's leading pace, and the car was working really, really well. Eventually, though, everyone else improved, and we got pushed down all the way to P9. Mick Schumacher got eliminated in 13th place, but again, He's quite competitive, and our car looks really, really strong around here. So there's a lot of encouraging signs heading into the race. Either way, we go P9, and uh, there was a bit of a cut for the final chicane. I've got to be honest, you know, that cut may have, made, may have made a difference in terms of us getting knocked out. Surprisingly, Bottas in the Mercedes P11, he got eliminated from qualifying two. We then move into Q3, and um, I had probably the worst first sector I had all weekend, and this was on soft tires. It was a used set, um, you know, we used them in the first run in Q2, but we had an absolute shit show of a first sector, I can't lie, it was pretty average. Um, just mistakes, back end not working, and just struggling for grip big time. And uh, you know, in Q3 when it matters, you can really notice it. We crossed the line, we set at one minute 7.9, which is eight tenths of a second off of the Q2 lap time we did, which we used to get through the Q3. So it was way off the pace, but this lap right here was my best lap of the session and my best lap of the weekend. So let's see what the lap was and enjoy lap guys of the secret of Villeneuve one more time. There we go, absolutely perfect. Not as much of a cut this time through the final chicane. We keep it much more clean and respectful with the track limits. And overall, it was a great lap. P7, really clean, no mistakes. And that was pretty much me maximizing the car performance. And that was our best lap of the weekend, at 1 minute 7.0, which is really, really good. And the big shocker qualifying, both racing points in the top three. Stroll second, Perez in third. But of course, remember, Perez has that five place grid drop. So that means we are gonna start the race from P6, which is absolutely awesome both Ferraris up there as well and generally a great day at the office and a really strong qualifying what was the secret of your qualifying pace 
to be fair, we was quick here last year. I think it's just the car. It suits this track and the downforce, the engine. It all just works really well as a team, really. Was today a good day for you? Of course. It was a really good day and it couldn't have gone any better, really. Absolutely perfect. And I'm chuffed. What was the secret ingredient for your performance today? I think there was a lot of things, but um, gen generally we can just push flat out. The engine wear hasn't been an issue like season one, which is really, really good for us as a team, of course. Appreciate your time. And there we go then. After qualifying, looking at the rivalry breakdown, Sebastian Vettel does out-qualify us, so he does gain a point on the rivalry, but still we have a three-point advantage with four races to go, which is going to be quite interesting to see how that one kind of progresses over time. We do gain a decent amount of acclaim individually and also as a team, which is good to see. And uh, yeah, guys, we are ready for the race. So P6 on the grid, Schumacher P13 on the free tyre choice. It's going to be exciting, but without further ado, let's get the Canadian Grand Prix underway. Bonjour, it's time once again to go racing here in Montreal, the second largest French-speaking city in the world and home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle, and average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Let me ask you about Racing Point. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Lance Stroll alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen, Martinez, Albon, Perez. They've taken a grid penalty. Gasly and Esteban Ocon. Fiat, Schumacher, Carlos Sainz and Raikkonen, Ricardo, Norris, Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen, Russell, Bottas, Giovinazzi and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. Right guys, so it's time for the Canadian Grand Prix, starting from P6 on the grid. Perez, of course, with a five-place grid penalty, which means we start on the third row alongside Max Verstappen. Things are looking good. The pace looks really strong around here, just like last season, but of course, even stronger this year with the improved package and the upgrades we've made in the last year or so. And I'm hoping to have a good race. And also, I'm hoping Mick could potentially score some points today on the reverse strategy. In terms of our one, though, we're going to be starting the race on the soft tires, of course, that we qualified on, and then moving on to two sets of mediums with a chance of rain later on in the race. It will, it will depend when the rain arrives. If I'm still in the soft tyres and we get a warning about the rain arriving, I may box for the hard tyres and just take the hards all the way up until when the rain arrives and avoid an extra pit stop. So we'll see how it goes. But time maintenance is going to be key around here and trying to drag your stints out before the rain arrives. Fuel-wise, 1.2 laps extra. Um, a little bit heavier than usual because Canada is pretty fuel-heavy and you tend to use quite a lot. So yeah, we're ready to go. I'm looking forward to it. I think we've got a strong chance of a top five finish and I think we do have the legit pace to do it. So let's see how the race goes and let's see if the rain plays a factor in the race here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Let's get into it. Right, here we go then. Let's build up the revs to about 11, 11 and a half thousand, give or take. The lights are on. And it's lights out, away we go. We get away really well. We get past Verstappen and we get on the inside of Sebastian Vettel here into turn one. Stroll being challenged by Charles Leclerc. We're going to go around the outside of Seb Vettel and we're going to make the move up into P4. What a start on the soft tyres. Lance Stroll in front of us in the racing point, which has been going really well this weekend, it has to be said. Stroll and Perez doing really, really well in qualifying. But uh, we've now got Sebastian Vettel all over our gearbox. Of course, we know about the Ferrari's top end speed, so it's going to be tricky to keep it under control in the first part of the race here. We're going to have to use quite a bit of overtake, I feel, just to stay competitive. Here comes Seb, he's looking for it, but uh, he's not close enough into the brake zone here. I want to see if I can stick with Stroll. Uh, there is a P3 up for grabs. It's going to be key to try and stay within the RS range by lap three. Also, tyre heating could be a factor in this one. We'll see how that one pans out. But for now, a great start 
We get a very good exit out of the hairpin, which gives me some breathing room. Uh, so it's a yellow flag at the hairpin. I'm guessing that's just down to low speed from the AI, but a really good exit. That's given us a big breakaway. We're actually closer to Lance Stroll here as we go into the final chicane. End of lap one. Bit of a cut there through the first part, but that's okay. Right, let's see. We are getting close to Stroll here. He's not running overtake mode. Oh, I thought about it. Just not enough on the brakes, unfortunately. I thought I may have had a chance, but we're looking good here already. Very good start to the Grand Prix here today. The RS enabled, and surprisingly, we've actually got a one-second gap to Sebastian Vettel. So he doesn't have the RS on us here on the back straight, but we do have the RS on Lance Stroll. So let's see if we can get past the Canadian hero in his home Grand Prix here today. Right, I wonder if we can get past Stroll here. We're not close enough into the final chicane, but if we can get the line right and carry the momentum through, maybe we can get him down towards turn one. Let's find out. Do we have enough juice? We're gaining. Not quite enough, though. I had a little look. Purple sector three, but not quite enough. But we're putting the pressure on here. Gap to Sebastian Vettel now, 1.4. So the pace is legit. Oh, Latifi's out in the Williams. First retirement confirmed. No early safety car, though, or virtual safety car, for that matter. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Ooh, okay, there's the first warning already. That's quite early. We'll keep an eye on that, see how that progresses. Close enough to challenge Stroll here. The problem now is that he's caught up to Charles Leclerc, and he has DRS on the Ferrari, so it's making it very hard for me to make any inroads and to make any difference on the straight, which is a real shame. So it's looking like a battle for second place, potentially, here, which is interesting. Ooh. I've had a bit of a better exit out of the final chicane. But again, because Stroll's got DRS on Leclerc, it's making it impossible for me to make a challenge on here, unfortunately. I'm trying to look for other places to make an overtake, maybe, but we don't seem to have an advantage anywhere else, really. There's no glaring weakness from Lance Stroll. So at the minute, we're kind of stuck here. Okay, that's a pretty good exit out of there. Leclerc's just pulled away a little bit. Stroll still has DRS on the Ferrari, but... He's not as close as last time. I'm going to keep it in rich mix. See if I can get the run through the final chicane. Oh, maybe not. I'm losing the rears already. Damn it. This is so frustrating because I've got a better pace than Lance Stroll. Okay, so I'm expected to pit this lap. We're going to do opposite of Stroll. So whatever he does, we'll do the opposite of. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to pit. We're going to try and undercut Stroll here. Let's see if this works. Right, Hamilton pits in the Mercedes. Looks like we're going to hold him up a little bit, actually, in the process. We're going to go into the mediums. We shouldn't get held, as we've got the last pit box, which is great. Well, to be fair, Lewis got held up massively in the pit box. Oh, my God. We're ahead of Lewis. Lewis got held up really badly, and we're ahead of the net race leader. Only one stop to go. One stop left in this strategy. This undercut now has become even more important, because if we undercut Leclerc and Stroll... We're in the net race lead because we're ahead of Hamilton. So let's push. I think we're going to hit traffic on this lap, but we'll give it everything we've got. Let's see if this works out for us. We're eight tenths behind Bottas. Somehow we don't have DRS, but I'm expecting most of these guys to pit. They are on the soft tires. Here we go then. Let's see. Nick is in the pits. Nick in the pits. Throwing the car in through the chicane there, giving it everything we've got. This undercut's going to be closed. The Clarence Straw leaving the pit exit now. Purple final sector. Have we done enough? Yes, we have. Oh my God, we've done it comfortably. So we are now leading the Canadian Grand Prix with a net race leader. What a massive decision that was. That undercut was absolutely perfect. Now we've got to get past Lando Norris here. Let's see if we can get past the McLaren driver. Problem is, this is a good place to overtake, but not for me. I'm not particularly great on traction out of here compared to the AI, but to be fair, you can see Lando struggling massively with his tires. We're gonna to pull to the inside. I'll make a nice simple move. And there we go, we're through. Now we've got to stay ahead. Fiat pits, as will Lando, I'm guessing. So P1 in the race, we've got a good clearance to Hamilton. Hamilton's lost a bit of time in traffic. So we've got a one second gap to the Mercedes driver. Whether we can keep that, I'm not too convinced, but we'll try our best either way. We are in the mix here for a race win and podium here today. We think we may see some rain. ETA is about 15 minutes. Okay, that's interesting. We may have to stop again, so we'll keep an eye on that. I'm hoping the rain does delay itself, because we've got a good pace in the dry, so I'm quite happy to stay with these tyres. Pace is still very strong. We're solidifying our chance of a podium here. 
Hamilton hasn't been close enough to challenge me. I've also noticed that Claire and Stroll are on soft tyres. I didn't realise before. And even then, Stroll is dropping back. He's just clinging on to the close DRS, but he hasn't got much left. I'm trying to stretch these guys, but at the minute, this is working out beautifully for us because we're looking really strong for pace. We've pretty much now burned off our excess fuel. Famous words from Jeff, of course. So the car's a bit more lighter and a bit more, you know, nimble through the corners. Leclerc's starting to struggle now in his soft tyres. He's uh, just starting to drop back a little bit. Stroll is also out of the RS range. So the pace is very strong. Relentless pace from me. And now Lewis is putting the pressure on us. So it's just me and him now really out front. It's a two-way scrap for the race win. We've pretty much secured a podium with this pace and this strategy and the undercut. So... We're looking very good here today, and now we're looking at the skies. It's just starting to get dark up above, and the rain is getting closer. I've still not heard a message in a little while, so I'm not quite sure where the rain is. Here comes Lewis. He's closing in a little bit. Close as he's been so far, but still not close enough. We're still running at a good pace. It's getting very dark now. For like rain, it could be any minute. So we're going to keep an eye on the sky and also look at the car to see if any water drops start to fall. But I really think any second now the rain's going to arrive. I'm kind of waiting for Leclerc and Stroll to pit. Because they've been on those soft tyres for a long time now. And I feel like they're going to stop any second. We're still keeping Hamilton at bay. Okay, you don't think we're far away from some rain? I'll keep you updated as the conditions change. There it is. The rain could be here any second now. Going to burn off the rest of our fuel. And uh, get the car as light as possible. Leclerc and Stroll pit. There you go. As expected. As that's now going to make it a two-horse race for the race win here today. Me versus Hamilton. Okay, here we go. The raindrops are falling. You can see the car. Will it be like Monaco where the rain comes very quick? Or will it be quite slow and progressive? We're about to find out. Let's see what the grip is like. I think it's quick rain. Cut that corner a bit too much there, but Hamilton stays out, so that's okay. Right, let's see how this goes. The energy store is getting worn, reducing our overall capacity. The more charge you hold, the faster that capacity will drop. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, really. We've got a bit of engine wear on the control electronics and an energy store, because we've only got two of those, and uh, we've been running on those since the start of the season. Those are going to be the two parts that are marginal for wear all season long in terms of getting a penalty. But we should be okay on those. I don't think it will affect us too much. Rain's not too heavy so far. We're going to start for one more. I don't feel like the grip is that bad at the moment. The rain's definitely not falling as quick as Monaco, I'll say that. We get a bit loose there, but there's still plenty of grip. I think that last lap, though, may have been the one, to be fair. Suddenly, the grip has got very bad. This is definitely a lap to pit. The grip is getting very thin. We're going to pit this lap. DRS disabled, there you go. That's usually the sign. Trying to get the traction down out of the hairpin there. Right, let's use up the rest of the fuel and burn up the ERS just to keep a safe gap to Lewis he's going to close that gap up pretty easily in the pit lane to be fair okay the stewards have now disabled DRS DRS is now disabled there we go right pretty safe entry didn't risk it too much I was expecting a bigger lock up to be fair right Lewis is going to pit behind for me we need a big stop here sub two seconds to keep us ahead of the Mercedes will it happen let's find out We got lucky there, 2.9, but we're still ahead. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Everyone's pitting for inters. Nobody's staying up from what I can tell. There shouldn't be an issue for Mick in the pit box either. As uh, we did our pit stop quite early. Right, let's see what our pace is like on these tyres. But with 13 laps to go, we're looking good for a race win here. Our pace is pretty good so far. Gap to Lewis, 1.4. Let's see what happens now on a proper lap around here. We're pulling away. The pace is unbelievable. The X factor here is the fact that uh, Lewis doesn't have DRS anymore. So I'm just able to cruise out of that one second window and keep pulling away. Look at the gap. It's creeping up to two seconds. Hamilton's getting a little bit on me through there. But we are running at an incredible pace here. We're looking very good at the minute. Gap to Lewis 2.7. We're really going for this well into the final 10 laps if these inters hold on and don't overheat we are looking absolutely great for our second ever race win gap now four seconds to lewis hamilton 
We've got this wrapped up now, unless something terrible happens. This is looking like a race win. Six laps to go. Right, guys, here we go. On the last lap of the race now, I've been quite concentrating and uh, going absolutely flat out. For the last couple of laps, I've had the engine in lean mix, just trying to save a bit of the power unit for future races. So Lewis has got that gap down a little bit. I managed to get the gap as high as 6.5. But here we go then, guys. Onto the back straight. What a race. There's going to be no asterisk on this one. We deserve this. You know, the strategy, the first stop with the undercut was the key area and the key moment in the race. And here we go. Through the front of chicane. Getting the rear end out a little bit. We're going to come through to win our second ever race in this career mode. Get in there. Yes. Nice work, that's P1, race win, well done. A truly magnificent drive then and a great performance from the entire team to secure victory here in Canada. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Wow, guys, what a race. Absolutely insane. Our second ever race win. And just like Singapore last year, it was pretty comfortable and relatively dominant, especially in the wet conditions. We pick up 25 massive points here today. Hamilton second with the fastest lap. Sebastian Vettel third. And that rounds off the podium. Perez P4 ahead of Albon, Ocon, Kafia up in seventh place. Leclerc only P8 after starting P3. Mick Schumacher, ninth place in the points. Once again, great drive from Mick here today. You know, there's a lot of you guys that want me to replace him and he's responded once again. You know, when the pressure's on, Mick seems to respond. So P9 for Mick Schumacher this weekend. Lance Stroll when the end finishes P10. So we was battling Stroll and Leclerc, if you remember, not too long ago. So that goes to show how far they dropped down the order. Bottas, P11, misses out on the points. Raikkonen, signs of Verstappen, Ricardo, Gasly, Norris, Magnussen, Giovinazzi, Russell, Grosjean, Latifi, all out of the points. Latifi being the only return from the race here today as a Canadian. In terms of the standings, though, I mentioned this in the last episode. Are we a championship contender? Could it happen? We're up to fourth place. We've overtaken Charles Leclerc. We're only four points behind Sebastian Vettel. We are 42 points off the lead. But if we keep improving the car, we've got two major chassis upgrades on the way. Could we challenge this season? That could be a big one. Constructors, we're in third place. And we've got a pretty good gap, actually, to racing point. 29 points in our pocket, which is absolutely great. And in terms of Ferrari, the gap is pretty big. So we're looking good for third place at the moment. But guys, what a race. You know, double points. We pick up the win. It's a great day to be a 97 Racing F1 fan. So guys, that is it for the race at Canada. We're now going to move into the laptop and put on even more upgrades onto the car. How are you feeling after that win? absolutely awesome i'm so happy you know for the team the work we've put in you know the fans you know i've got a lot of supporters of course watching the content and it just means a lot to really deliver so uh, yeah it's credit to them they've put in so much work you were cutting your way through the field during the race yeah i mean the car was great the the undercut in the first stop i think the timing was perfect and um, we managed to get past stroll and leclerc so that really worked out well but generally the car was great the engine was fantastic it was really powerful around here and you can notice you really looked in control of your car out there your team must be thrilled of course you know they they did a great job and there's always you know it's credit to them things are looking up after last week aren't they yeah, I mean, you could say that. I mean, Baku was not a bad result. Second place in Baku, a win today. Um, second place in Monaco, three podiums in a row. I, I think things are looking up as a whole generally. So, yeah, credit to the team. The investments have paid off. Great. Well, that's everything. 
it's time for the rivalry breakdown. And as you can see, four to four, which is pretty interesting. We keep our lead of three points over Sebastian Vettel, 16 to 13. And uh, we now move into the acclaim. We gain a big chunk here today, almost level 14. Mick Schumacher, almost level 11. And as a team, we're very close now to level 17, which is absolutely awesome. In terms of the cash flow, though, we hopefully have hit all of our targets, which we have. We gain a 1.36 million uh, bonus and uh, we're getting pretty close now. I think we could definitely challenge in terms of maybe going for a higher sponsors and you know going for higher bonuses. We're now nearly at $10 million and we'll keep saving up that cash moving forward into the second half of the season. Right, so we are back on the laptop. We don't have that many R&D points. We have 1,000 points pretty much. First of all, though, let's assign some activities. We've got 10 days until the next race. We've got three days before an invitational event. So what we'll do is we'll do, I think, for the first one, I'm tempted to do sponsor advertisement to improve our cash and team acclaim. Uh, that we then do the invitational event. We've got another five days after that. So a sponsor event could work, to be fair. It would give us good team acclaim once again, and it would help us level up and get closer to level 17. But we are going to go some uh, reaction training, make Schumacher to improve his pace even more. And then we'll work on, I think, durability equipment upgrade. I think we're going to work on that soon because we need an energy star upgrade at some point. So we'll do those upgrades. We then move over to the R&D tab. And uh, speaking of energy store, let's have a look to see if it's possible to upgrade it. So let's see where the energy store is, if we can find it up here maybe there it is okay so the energy store a minor upgrade 29 percent failure chance that should be okay so we'll get that on the car for future races and then we'll save the rest of our points moving forward and let's see if the upgrades arrive so let's skip ahead on the calendar and let's get to the invitational event okay great news so the one upgrade that had a 19 percent failure chance which was on standard development has failed so we're not lucky at all when it comes to upgrades. I've got to say, you know, the failures keep happening. I mean, this was a standard one, 90% failure chance. That shouldn't be failing. So we can't afford the upgrade right now. So we're going to have to push on and buy at a later date. Okay, so for once, I thought I'd treat you guys to a bit of a classic event slash invitational event. So let's see how this goes. And hopefully we hit all of our targets. Right, here we go. Then the lights are going to start coming on. Let's see if we can do this. Three laps to get past. I'm guessing all the cars ahead of us in the 96 Williams. Let's do it, let's have a little bit of fun. Okay, car number one. Let's see if we can get past this 1988 McLaren. Gonna go for the switch back out of there. We're on the outside line, but we should be able to get that one on the brakes. So I'll say that at least, I've messed that up a little bit to be fair. The McLaren comes back at us, but we make the move. There we go. One down, four to go, or three to go actually. We're gonna gain a lot of course on the downfall section through here. We're going to line them up for a move on the inside or not. Wow, I got completely squeezed off there. Bit rude from the McLaren driver, Mr. Jones. We're going to get him here, though. We'll set up the kink to go flat out, of course, and make an easy move. Look at that. V10 versus V10. But eventually, we get the edge. Well, to be fair, I think, never mind. The 88, I think, has got a V12 with turbo. So I got that completely wrong. OK, time for another McLaren. Let's see if we can get past this guy here. I'm gonna go on the inside this time. Get a better line. There we go. One remains with one lap to go. This should be pretty achievable. This is it. Through the downfall section, we're gonna get nice and close. And we'll try and make the move on the Mistral straight. Short shifting through there. I've got a lot more grip and downfalls. I'm gonna switch back underneath. Can we get the move around the outside? Yes, we do. And there we go, P1, job done. And there we go then, through the final corner. Another invitational event completed. So we're gonna get an extra $150,000 and a thousand on the acclaim, which is absolutely awesome. There we go, job done. Across the line, bish bash bosh. Okay, let's wrap things up. So good news, one of the chassis upgrades has arrived. I believe it's the one that we rushed and that one actually arrived, which is quite surprising. So we're now gonna skip ahead until we have enough cash to buy the failed upgrade. Unfortunately, we are a point short to buy the upgrade, which is unbelievable. So unfortunately, we are going to have to just sit back and accept we can't buy this upgrade this episode. So yeah, let's quickly sim ahead to the next race. And there we go. The engine upgrade has arrived, which we didn't actually purchase ourselves. So that's an upgrade from Mercedes, I believe. So let's have a look. And it's, um, I think it's that one there. It's got to be that one because we didn't buy an upgrade as far as I'm aware, which is um, surprising. So that's on Mercedes. So we'll take that, an engine upgrade from, from Merck. 
is always welcome. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's the situation heading into the next race at Paul Ricard, which we just did a classic event at. So, guys, if you enjoyed the episode, drop me a like and subscribe if you are new for daily F1 2020 content on the channel, guys, for, you know, regular crew mode content and also hot laps and setups and all that kind of tips and tricks content, guys, that you really, really enjoy. Um, also, guys, check out the final episode or the previous episode on screen along with the full playlist right now. But that is it from me here today, guys, and I'll see you all next time in the next episode for the French Grand Prix. But until then, guys, take care and it's goodbye from me.